just got done with my shift, went to the gym, showered up. So now let me talk to you about charge nurses, what they do, what they are, how it feels like to be one, and kind of run you through my schedule as a charge nurse. episode and you like our content hit the like hit the subscribe hit that bell drop a comment we're gonna make more content like this see you guys soon Big money. 147.2. All right, got my weight. Now it's time to get ready for work. All right, guys, I'm all clean. My whoop should be done processing. Let's go see what my recovery is. All right, so my sleep hasn't processed the whoop. I got about 10 hours of sleep. Really rare, but I'll take it. I'm at about 79% recovery. Want to check that out. And actually, while I was in the shower, I got a message from my manager saying that I'll be charged for tonight. I was oriented as charge a few weeks back. I've been charged alone for the past couple nights. Um, so today's gonna be another day. Let me take you through the charge nurse experience, guys. Before we head into work, I like to iron my scrubs. I just like to look nice and steamy. And today actually I'm just doing my pants because I'm gonna wear a regular unit t-shirt today since I'm charged. I can make my own rules. JK. All the ironing, let's make some food, check my bags, let's head out. When it comes to food, guys, I highly recommend meal prepping. I meal prep all the time, especially if I'm doing like three in a row, two in a row. We don't really have time to cook in between. So here I got some salad, I cut up some veggies. I feel like if I don't cut up my veggies, they just stay in the fridge and they go bad and I don't eat them. Got some carne asada, I got some rice and beans, and some tuna salad. And then here are my favorite cold oats. Cold oats are really good because you can eat them before work, after work, during work, you know, while you're driving, probably not while you're driving, but you know, you could eat them really whenever you want to. But most important thing, guys, is this little bag over here, a little snack pack over here. Got some trail mix, granola bars, beef jerky, some chips. Hold me over for sure the rest of the night. Food's all ready to go. Just gotta pack up and head out. I'm coming in. work today um, and I'm being charged it's about three o'clock in the morning finish my huddle finish my report sheet um, usually be like pretty busy in the, the beginning you want to run your nurses check human dynamics make sure you know patients are stable make sure what did their numbers um, did their blood draws we had staffing so we actually are four we actually have four beds empty so I had to send a nurse home and well, we called one off before I came in on shift, so two nurses actually got called off today. Um, but I usually begin to do my rounds, get a report from the prior charge, and then um, we do numbers three times, you know, so like around 8, midnight, at 4 a.m. So keep track of time and just check human dynamics those three times. 
Um, and then usually three o'clock, huddle report, the whole hospital goes on. And then a little bit after that, do my report sheet, round on all these nurses, um, see if they need anything or see if anything changed with the patients. Um, and then usually I do paperwork last. There's a bunch of paperwork to do. Usually I do that as late as I can just because you're more hands-on in the beginning. And right now actually I just got my monster. Um, so just going to do a little bit of paperwork. Still got an hour before I, I check the hemodynamics, like I said, 4 a.m. with hemodynamics. And then kind of just go from there. Uh, before I go home, I send uh, an email. And then the status of the unit, not nothing too crazy. Uh, today's past couple of days, we have one CRT, two balloon pumps, um, I think like four or five swans. So nothing super acute. No one's really um, deteriorating away quickly, but but still, yeah, keep an eye on them. You know, two balloon pumps, one CRT. I just gotta make sure everyone's everyone's doing their doing their thing and up up to speed and patient is satisfied. So it should be a smooth night, but you never know. Hopefully, we get some admissions. Hopefully, we don't. But um, like I said, I did send two nurses home, so hopefully nobody comes in. But we'll see. We'll see. Um, we do have a few patients out for transfer. We're going to hold them because I don't want to send any more nurses home. And then God forbid, you know, I send another nurse home and I transfer some patients. And then, you know, we get like a patient get, it gets helicoptered and then we're kind of screwed or, or um, he's taken here by ambulance. So we're going to lay low and um, hope for the best and just tackle things as they come in. But so far, smooth sailing again. Just stay that way. Still my shift. Pretty smooth night, another crazy going on. I bought to go to my car, go to the gym. So I'll fill you guys in later after I work out. Finally got to my car. Work's been okay. Nothing crazy going on. It wasn't too busy, so I'm not that tired, not that stressed out. Got my gym bag in the back. So we're about to go to the gym. But first, we're in a dry scoop. I like my dry scoops. Get this little little scoop rod here. So it's full body, so it's gonna be well needed, much needed. Got done with a nice full body workout, heading home. Let's go talk about charge nurses, what they do, what we do, how it is. Just got done with my shift, went to the gym, showered up. So now let me talk to you about charge nurses, what they do, what they are, how it feels like to be one, and kind of run you through my schedule as a charge nurse. So if you're thinking about if you're thinking about being a charge nurse or you're just kind of um, asking yourself what does a charge nurse actually do? So a charge nurse has less hands-on with patient care. So you're not doing as much direct patient care as like a registered nurse would, like a staff nurse would, and you're doing more towards like a managerial, manager role kind of thing. You're not managing really like the hospital or the unit, you're just managing that shift for the most part. So a little more paperwork, you're more of like a bird's eye view compared to, like I said, direct hands-on. So when I come into work and I'm charged, the first thing I do is obviously I get report from the day shift charge. I do night shift, so my report comes from the day shift charge. And we do assignments a little bit differently. So the day shift charge makes assignments for the night shift nurses. And then I would make the assignments for the day shift nurses when they come in. So first things first, you get a report. We have a bed huddle. So all the nurses for the unit, unit meet in one room and we discuss how the day went. Who's really critically ill? Um, what nurses are getting assignments? How does the day went in general? And then nurses move on and go get their, their report, move on to their patients. And, uh, and I stay back and I discuss with the charge nurse from days on how the day went with more detail compared to just like the regular huddle. She tells me, or he tells me about each patient a little bit. Um, we go off our report sheet, so all the patients are, are there with their bed numbers, room numbers, things like that. So once that, that's done with, I take all the responsibility. The day shift charge goes home and everything basically relies on me. I get the phone and it's all me from there. So the first thing I do is I do a round, round everybody. So let's say I get a report at about 7.15. You know, I settle down a little bit and I do my first round at like 7.30, 7.45, see if 
if these nurses have to catch up on things that I, I can help them with because this is kind of like a little bit of every downtime you could say. You want to touch base with everybody, see if what they got to do with the day shift, miss something or is there something that has to be followed up on nights that you know wasn't followed up on days, things like that. You're just slowly helping each nurse to kind of get comfortable with how their night's going to go. Once that, that is done, um, I like a hemodynamics. I work on a cardiac floor, so we have lots of swans, lots of bloom pumps, and the first thing I always look at is their their hemodynamics. So their PA pressures, their indexes, their outputs, their mixed venuses, things like that, because you want everybody to have that inputted in a timely manner. So then you can address it. You know, you want to have these numbers in, before, usually ideally before like 10 p.m., before 11 p.m., just so that if these numbers are skewed or they're off, you can call the physician. Or if you guys have residents, you can talk to residents. You want to make sure that you catch a problem before it gets too big. So after that, I basically go on a computer, check staffing, make sure that on my list of staff nurses for days, those are the correct ones that are in the computer. You know, because people do make mistakes, it's not like we write the wrong name and that nurse maybe isn't supposed to be be there tomorrow morning, but guess what? You know, she shows up or whatever, things like that. You just wanna you just wanna dot your eyes and cross your T's at, at this point. Um, after that, I basically get my report sheet and I put in patient labels. I slowly jot down little things about the patient. We have a standardized report sheet. So on this report sheet, you put the patient sticker on there and you have the patient's room number, you have what lines they have, what the activity status, their drips, things like that. It's standardized things that, that, that you would need to know like real quick. Uh, and then of course you have a little bit about each patient and why they're there. And then after that, um, I would say probably after that or even while you're doing that, you want to see how much open beds you have and see if you're properly staffed for like an admission, you know, because staffing is always an issue. So you always want to make sure that if there's an admission that comes or if there's an open bed, you always plan that that bed's going to get filled at some point that night. So you want to always have that in the back of your mind because that's important because I've had a few situations or a few scenarios where I had empty beds. So per policy and per per the whole standard protocol or whatever, I had to send a nurse home. I couldn't keep her, so I sent her home, and then guess what, a couple hours later we got an admission and I ended up being charged with an admission. You know, that's that's a lot of work, so you have to just pay attention. You, if you can, try to hold on to your nurses as long as you can, just because you never know what's gonna happen, especially like in the ICU. Um, so once I do that, we have like different paperwork. I'm not gonna go in detail with the paperwork because it's gonna be different for each unit, for each facility, each hospital, so I'm not gonna tell you about the paperwork. But basically, like I said before, you're not as much hands-on as registered, like a registered staff nurse would be. So you just have the eagle eye. You just have the bird's eye view. You want to check on your nurses. You want to make sure everyone's doing okay. You want to keep a close eye on the critically ill patients. You want to make sure that these nurses are following up with, with um, different patient issues. So like I said, if the human dynamic numbers were low, you want to make sure the nurse is following up with the physician. Make sure she's notifying somebody that these are the bad numbers. And what we do in our unit, usually just out of, out of courtesy that if... Let's see, I'm a staff nurse and my numbers are poor. I would always let the charge nurse know. Like, hey, my patient's numbers are low. He's doing pretty good, but his numbers are a little bit lower than they were before. I'm going to page out to so-and-so because, because it's just common courtesy. So that, that basically tells me that, hey, this patient is a little bit sicker. Let me focus on him a little bit more compared to, you know, a more stable patient that has good hemodynamics. Another important thing you want to look at, especially if you're in ICU, not just hemodynamics, you also want to check on your intubated patients. Why? Because some of your patients are going to be weaned off intubation in the morning or overnight, depending on how your facility does it. You always want to know which patients are going to be weaned in the morning. Why? Because you got to prep them. So you got to slowly decrease sedation. You want to give them a sedation vacation because, because guess what? That patient is not going to get weaned off the vent if he's over sedated. So the goal is to ideally, if possible, have them completely off sedation before you extubate them. You know, maybe you want to take them off the vent, take them off the probe or the reverse side and maybe put them on a Presidex, something that's not as sedating as, you know, those stronger medications. Presidex, you know, we use, use that a lot for the most part. So with weaning, you have to start at some point during the morning, like early morning, like three o'clock, four o'clock, you have to slowly start going on down on the sedation because we want to pull that ET tube out eventually at some point. Like I said, you don't want to keep it sedated because there's no way the person is going to breathe on his own if he's sedated. Also, what I do overnight is we do have a bed huddle overnight. So the whole hospital hops on a phone call. They list how many open beds they have, how many staffing issue, issues they have, how many people are coming in. So that kind of gives you an idea. If you're in the ICU, you kind of you kind of gauge where you could put one of your more stable patients if you would have to transfer transfer somebody out and take out an admission. You know, so you can kind of you kind of gauge like okay, there's a 
there's two beds on a step down yet. Great. I technically in ICU have one step down patient that if an emergency arises, I could send that patient down to the step down and I could admit an ICU critically ill patient. You want to keep that in mind because even though it, you might work nights, there's still a lot of movement at night, a lot of transfers. So you always want to keep that in the back of your mind because you never know when someone's going to come. You don't know when someone's going to get sick. Before my shift ends, I always send out an email. This is required, so I don't do it by choice. I have to send that out to all the managers and, and ACMs about these little things, how many patients we have, how many transfers we had. It's like diff it's basically how, almost how the night went. And that's just a courtesy email just so you know the managers know if like something bad happened or if we had a hard shift or just if you have a lot of critically ill patients, all managers know so they kind of know, know what to expect. And then finally, I mentioned this, this before about creating the report sheet. What I do is, once again, I probably around, around the whole unit probably like four or five times a night. And so my shift technically ends at 7 a.m. So probably like around four o'clock, maybe, maybe five in the morning, I do another round and I round with each nurse about their patients just to see if there's any updates. And I write those updates down on the report sheet just so we kind of have an idea of is this patient's care progressing, is like, is the plan still like in place? Like what changed overnight or what's different from this night compared to during the day? So you kind of want to keep that a nice, nice kind of snowball effect going so you have a good idea of how the patient's doing overall and how they're progressing. Then finally, seven o'clock hits. We have a huddle, like I mentioned before, at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. Same thing as before. I sit down, I go over how my night went with all the nurses there. I list some critically ill patients. I maybe list some safety events if any happened. Um, I list which patients are restraints, what, who's in isolation, why they're in restraints, why are they in isolation, and why are these patients more critically ill than others. So kind of get, gets a heads up that like if patient in bed 20 is, is on, you know, we had to add Levo, Neo, and now he's also gonna get started on IP. So people are gonna know that bed 20 is real sick and that nurse is gonna get bed 20, she's probably gonna have a pretty long day, unfortunately. Um, once that's updated, I give nurses their assignments and you know, same thing as before, they leave and they get the report and I stay with the upcoming day shift charge and I go a little bit more in detail on each patient and we do our rounds. And that's a synopsis of how my charge nurse shift basically goes. Now since I've been charged for, for quite a bit, I would have been charged of step down and I've recently been charged of the, the ICU. So let me offer you guys some tips on how to be a good charge or how to be a better charge or maybe you just offer you on some advice that you haven't really thought about. So as a charge nurse, you're not doing a lot of patient care and that's fine. Don't feel guilty that you're not helping boost somebody, you're not helping wash somebody up. That's fine. You're, that's not really your job as a charge nurse. You should always know what's going on with each patient and always hang out and hover by your most critically ill patients. So if patient 20 and 22 are really sick, you should kind of hang out over there. Don't just hang out in the office or just out in the outskirts. You're also going to be a resource for these nurses. So if nurse has questions, they're probably gonna to come to you because you're supposed to be the leader. You're more of in like a managing role. So theoretically, you should have a little bit more knowledge about certain things. I'm not saying you're gonna know all the answers and there's no way you are gonna know all the answers, but just keep that in the back of mind. Maybe you should study a little bit more. If, if you have a question in your head, maybe you should look it up before somebody else asks you that question. Also, you wanna have really good time management, especially when you have open beds because those beds are most likely going to fill. And with admissions, you know admissions, there are a lot of work, not only for the direct nurse that's taking care of it, but also for the tech and also for you because you're gonna be in there admitting that patient with that nurse, or you should be. You don't wanna just stand and just watch the nurse you know, admit this patient. You wanna be in there helping because you wanna get your eyes on that patient too, just so you kind of get an idea of what's going on. Just because this is a new patient and you don't know what's going on with them, right? Because they're, 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 they've just been admitted. So there's no way you know what's going on. So as a charge nurse, the bird's eye view, this is your, your first take on a patient. Your, your estimate or your hypothesis on how this patient is doing is gonna be probably a little more valuable than the actual nurse that's gonna have them, just because you have a little bit more knowledge. Another thing I would recommend is maybe keep a post-it note and write down things you have, to, you have to do, create a schedule. Like me personally, I always carry this list around with me and that's literally all my charge nurse responsibilities just so I don't forget because sometimes the day or night gets busy and then you're kind of like you're a little frazzled you're a little stressed out and you're like you're like damn what do i do next what do i gotta do still and this oh this note reminds me of what do i gotta do it's i just write it down write it down by hand and it literally is a little, little reference if you enjoyed this episode and you like our content hit the like hit the subscribe hit that bell drop a comment we're gonna make more content like this see you guys soon